Hi, I'm Christy. Welcome to Weird and Witchy Shit, a place for, well, Weird and Witchy Shit. Here we talk about everything from the magic of yoga, rituals, tarot, crystals, astrology, self-love, mental health, spiritual stuff, spooky things, and anything of the mystical variety. So if that sounds like the kind of shit you're into, then you're in the right place, my friend. Welcome to the coven. Narcissus was a beautiful mortal boy from the city of Thisbe. The origin of his birth is kind of unknown. Some say he was the son of a king and queen. Some say he was the son of Endymion and Selene. And some people say that he was the son of a nymph and a river god. It's actually not entirely important to the story. I'm just trying to give as much context as I possibly can. All you need to know is he is one of the most beautiful mortals who ever walked the earth. When Narcissus was just a boy, his father visited an oracle to find out what fate his son had in store for the rest of his life. And the oracle told him that his son was set to live a really happy, really successful, wonderful, amazing life. As long as he did not ever know himself. As he grew up, Narcissus became a very skilled hunter. Not only that, he was incredibly popular and he had many, many people who were very interested in him romantically, but he never returned these feelings for anyone else. Actually, one of the boys, Ami Inaz, sorry about the pronunciation, I feel like I apologise for that in literally every episode. He was Narcissus's friend and um, when he says that he was interested and he was in love with him and his feelings were not reciprocated, he actually killed himself on the doorstep of where Narcissus lived with a sword that Narcissus had previously gifted to him. It also says that the dying wish of the boy would be that the gods would lay a curse on Narcissus so that he would know how painful it was to fall in love so deeply and not have those feelings reciprocated. I mean, we've all been there. Echo was an Oread nymph of the mountains. Again, she was very beautiful as well as being very blessed with a beautiful voice. A voice that she never ever ever stopped using so she wouldn't shut the hell up. But Echo was funny and friendly and she always had like good stories to tell and she was well liked amongst the other nymphs and even the gods. And Zeus actually used Echo's chatterbox nature to his advantage. So while he was off like shagging nymphs and everybody else, he got Echo to distract Hera with her lengthy stories and non-stop chit-chatting so that Hera would not be able to spy on Zeus and she was kept like distracted so Zeus was free to do whatever the hell he wanted. But when Hera found out that this is what Echo was doing, Echo ended up getting punished. Hera took away from Echo the one thing that she loved more than anything, her voice. But technically, she actually could still speak, but she couldn't use any words of her own. All she could ever do was repeat back to her what was already said, like an echo. One day while Narcissus was hunting in the woods, Echo noticed him from afar and immediately fell in love with him, like everyone seems to do when they see Narcissus. Sensing that he was being watched, Narcissus calls out, who's there? And all she's able to say back to him is, who's there? And he finds her weird, so he's like, go away. And she's like, go away. And he's like, okay, like fucking rude. And he's like, I hate you. And she's like, I hate you. And this goes on for like some time. Honestly, it's exhausting. And the pair are like arguing, but not really arguing because Echo can't tell him exactly how she feels and exactly what she really wants to say to him. So eventually she gives up and she runs off into the woods crying. While she's doing this, Narcissus leans down into a nearby pool of water 
for a drink when he sees staring back at him the most beautiful man he's ever seen in his life. And for the first time, Narcissus falls in love. Mesmerised, he reaches his hand out to touch the man's face, but is met by only water. He leans down to try and kiss the man. The man leans up to try and kiss him. But again, he's met with only water. By this time, Echo had returned to watch Narcissus from afar. She couldn't resist him and wanted to just be near to him. She watched him tell the man in the pond, You're so beautiful, Narcissus heard. So beautiful, reply back to him. I love you. I love you. I'll stay with you forever. Stay forever. And that's exactly what Narcissus did. He stayed there watching his own reflection forever until eventually he died. Echo stayed watching over Narcissus until he died and then out of heartbreak she too died, leaving nothing but the echoes of her love behind. And Narcissus was turned into a flower, as is very common in these mythology stories, and it is the Narcissus flower, or I would call it a daffodil. I will also say there are other versions of the story that Narcissus realises that it's himself staring back at him in the pond, and then he realises why everyone is so upset that he doesn't love them back because he's like holy shit I actually am like that hot that I am worth like killing myself over and then he kills himself. If you have enjoyed this I am sure you will enjoy my other Greek mythology stories. Please give the video a like as that's a really cool and free way to support me and to support the channel. Subscribe if you would like to see more and I'll see you in another one. Bye! If you'd like to continue the conversation, you can get me on Instagram at Christie's underscore coven. That's K-R-I-S-T-Y-S underscore coven. You can also find me on YouTube at Christie's Coven, where I post a lot of free yoga classes and shit like that. And I'd love to have you join because it's not a coven if it's just me. And until next time, bye!